Hey guys, this is Tony with RV Barn Dominium. Well, today's issue is going to be our awning. What we've got happening here is, is that when we go to put the awning out, it's, it's power operated. So when we push the button for it to come out, the left hand side does fine and it falls according to when we're holding the button. But this side will not come out automatically. It wants to stay and you have to manually push up on this while it's coming out. Let me hit the button and you'll be able to see what it's doing. So you see I've got the button on and see there it is just unraveling and not opening up. So then I have to come out and I have to manually catch up with the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and put this out all the way and I'll show you what we think has gotten going on. And as usual, I'm going to have to go out there and push it. Ooh. Really, it's a pain for one person. Okay, so what we got to watch out for here in this type of a situation is not only because it doesn't want to roll out on its own, and that's a hassle, but also because if the wind blows, it will easily pick that awning up and try to fold it back in because there's no resistance on this side. So after a little bit of troubleshooting and looking at it, I, we, what I've concluded is, is that this pneumatic piston right here which is what pushes on this elbow out at, when it's trying to unfold is it's lost its pressure. So uh, the, uh, the seals in it, the rubber seals in it may have lost the compression. It might've got a pinhole in it. Who knows? Uh, I tested it by pushing. How was that pushing? I think I was pulling down. Yes. I can pull down on it really easy and that's compressing this piston. And it shouldn't be that easy. If I go to the other side and pull down over, there's a lot of resistance on it. And that's the way it should be. So I uh, got on the internet. I looked up the manufacturer, which was written on the barrel section of the awning. It has the manufacturer, make, model, the whole nine yards of it. And uh, got on the internet, looked it up. And uh, for just a few dollars, under $40, $35, $30, somewhere in that vicinity, you can get a new air cylinder uh, for this. So uh, we're gonna change this out and uh, I'm gonna show you how easy that turns out to be. All right then, so this is the, the new air cylinder that I ordered and uh, it is just, the body of it is shorter than this one, but the, th but the rod length is the correct length. So when you order it, you, yours might have options for different lengths. I think mine had different lengths for 37 inches and also one for 42, something like that. And so this, the, but the length is correct. Now, when, uh, if you look at the diagrams of, of your uh, air cylinders and your, your assembly when you're online looking at the manufacturer, I was concerned about right here where it connects here and also down here. And what they do is they have a rivet on here and that rivet goes in and then it's flared on this side. It's got some spacers, but also on the end of the rod and on the end of the body here, it has a, uh, it has a, like a knuckle joint, a ball joint or something of like that. The one that it came with does not have it. It has just, it just has a round end. So, but when I ordered it, it gave me the option to add those pieces. So this is that piece, that pack that came with it. And it has the rivets that go through. The awning's actually moving because the wind is blowing a little bit and it very easily moves. Uh, and it had a couple, it has the spacers, but it doesn't have those round knuckles that screw onto the end of the piston. So I thought, uh oh, I need to buy something else. I came out and started looking at this one though, 
And the more I stared at it, the more I came into the realization that, hey, I wonder if it just screws off. So let's look at that. I'm going to start out. I'm going to I'm going to take this end off first. So I'm just going to take the rod here. And I mean, literally, I can turn it with my fingers. And that is unscrewing it from that knuckle that's in here. And here it is. Threads. One thing you can notice on this piston, I knew it was going bad also because there was a lot of grease and oil that was on the shaft. That means it was leaking out of this, out of this cylinder up in here. And uh, that's when it lost its pressure. I don't ever remember spraying that with uh, silicone to um, help it in, it in its process, but, uh, that, and the other one was clean. So I kinda, that's one reason I also knew that that one was bad. Now, if I turn the body, it is unscrewing from there also. There we go. So now what I have is I have a cylinder, the same threads on those ends, threads on those. And the two cylinders are just about exactly the same length. A little bit difference, but that's okay because it'll compress. And the other one, the old one is broken, so it may be a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna start out by just feeding it up in here. I'm gonna put it, you know what? I'm gonna put it on up here first. I'm gonna use that that existing one that is there. And I'm just gonna screw the back end of that body into it, just until it bottoms out. And, and I'm not gonna tighten it hard because as you saw in the last one, I just, you know, hand tight. I just ro rolled that around hand tight. Now this one might be a little bit trickier because I'm gonna have to line it up and push the piston in a little bit to get it to uh, go in there. So. Let's see how easy I can do this. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Uh, I was trying to put this piston on and I could not I can't, you, these, these pistons, it's called a strut actually, these struts are so strong, you almost think that there's something wrong with it because you can't compress it. It's just that there's a lot of compression in these. So uh, the distance, uh, this one is just a little bit longer, so I couldn't get it compressed so that I could get it in there. And what I figured out was, is I have a button here to adjust the pitch of the to adjust the pitch of my awning to allow the water to flow off and that's what i that's what i had to adjust uh, i had to unlock that i had it i had it set to where this side uh, uh pitched to this side so it so it drained off so what i'm going to do is i'm going to push that in and i'm going to let this come in until it hits this strut or it hits this thread Come on. There it goes. Yeah, don't click on me. These are very heavy, so they want to uh, kind of have a mind of their own. Pull that out, pull that one out a little bit. There you go. I'm gonna hold it right there as much as I can. Then I'm gonna bring it in. To where it comes in, I'm gonna lower, let go of it until it comes down. It's lining up with the threads now. And then I'm gonna that in. I might actually reverse these. This end is just a little bit harder to whoops, tinker with while I'm holding this. Let's try that. Put this side on first.
as you can tell even just getting this one end down here was just a little bit awkward so it would be easier to get this one on if i go about go about it this direction Now I want to hold this one while I screw this one. Because this is a little bit tighter, I'm going to go get a, a, a soft plier to hold it onto here and uh, see if that'll do it. Now, one thing you should never do, any, any part of this cylinder that's going to end up going up into the body, you never want to put a to clamp onto it hold it, mar it, or anything of that sort, because when it goes in, you'll bust your seals up, you'll be all messed up. Out here, it does not go into the cylinder as, so you're a little bit safer there. And just to be even safer than that, I'm gonna put a piece of cloth around that paper towel, just to hold on to it. I am not squeezing that extremely hard at all either. Just enough. To get the job done, I don't want to unscrew it all the way, because then it'll come out down there. But it just has so much pressure on it. Let me see if I can push that out one more click again. All right, so that worked out. What I'm gonna do now is, that one is totally screwed in and bottomed out while putting that pad on the shaft so I don't mar the shaft any. I wanna make sure that that and this one is screwed in all the way also. See if I can turn it. Yeah, it's turning. So. <clears throat> All right, so the threads are bottomed out there. Threads are bottomed out there. Piston is in. So now I guess I can uh, go push the button and see if it works now. Turned out to be a little bit trickier, especially, but it worked out fine once I figured out that I can, when I push in my pins over here, that allows me to change the pitch. That, that actually, that's, that changed the distance between these two pinholes, between this pinhole and this, uh, between these two screws. It actually changed the distance on that and that's what i needed to get that that shaft on there because that shaft was about just around three quarters of an inch longer so uh yep let's give it a shot and see what she does now I'm going to stop and show you something on there. If you notice, not much of that cylinder of this ram 
gets pushed into this cylinder. There's not much. So it's not like this is going to bottom out. That's why I was saying if you grab it out here, in case you scratched it or something, it doesn't go into there. So that was a safe zone for, for grabbing that shaft. I don't suggest grabbing it at all, but if you have to, be sure to put a piece of cloth in there or something before you grip that tight. Uh, because if you put a scratch on that, it's, it's gone. An air cylinder will be gone. A shock uh, strut will be uh, totally broken. So looks like it's going to work. Let's go ahead and take it all the way in. And then we'll run it back out. I sure do hope this fixes it. All right. So now let's go out and see if she comes out on her own for once. Look at there. Look at that. Look at that. That's what I like to see. Yeah. All right. She's out now. So no more finagling it by myself. No more coming out here back and forth, having her open it while I'm pushing it. Another project fixed, but wasn't that hard. I did have to figure out the concept of getting it screwed into the one and then screwed into the other. Like I said, I used the adjustment that's right here on mine. You'll have to look at yours to find out where you're, it's where you can change the pitch of your awning so that the water runs off one side or the other. So I had to change that in order to get that distance to meet the distance and match for the size of that strut. But once I figured that out, kind of held it out. Two people might have helped out and one person could have held it apart while the other person was concentrating on screwing it in. But as you can see, I got it done. So it's not like it can't be done. So, uh, and if I can do it, you can do it. So, uh, till the next project. Well, you're still here, so you must want some bonus footage. While we're at it, and since I was ordering some stuff already on the internet, uh, the awning has another issue. And what that is, is uh, it's, it's getting old. Probably won't be too long here in the future. We're going to end up having to probably replace the actual awning uh, fabric itself. Uh, it's getting dry rotted and uh, it's just getting old. Uh, it's seen better days out in the sun, you know, when we used to have to keep it outside. So what I've got here is, is up here in this corner, the threads have tore off. Uh, all the threads are broken across the top and so it's exposed right here. I got a little tear right here and I thought I had a small cut somewhere. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to try to uh, repair those at least temporarily so they don't keep getting worse and worse. So uh, I went ahead and just uh, I'll order some repair tape. Um, this uh, it's called Better Boat actually but it says it repairs ripped in awnings covers, sails, tents, and more. So uh, it's, it's a clear tape, so you quote unquote can't see it. You'll be able to see it because it's clear, uh, shiny. But I mean, it is what it is. And if you have a tear somewhere in your awning, uh, a simple little fix with tape like this, uh, even if it's temporary, will fix that, uh, fix that spot and uh, allow you to keep, uh, keep dry. So, and this is just an issue here mainly of, I don't want, to, I don't want it to get worse. So. I'm going to uh, cut off a few pieces of this and uh, kind of put it together as much as I can up there. And uh, hopefully it'll allow us to limp by for at least, at least another year before we have to buy a whole new, uh, a whole new awning top. Uh, all the mechanisms are fine now. We just have to buy the fabric, but uh, we don't want to have to do that. So let's put a patch on this. I thought this product was going to be more of a kind of an over <laughs> overpriced boxing tape for taping up boxes, but it is definitely a lot thicker, uh, mill mill thickness, uh, as you would say. Um, so I'm going to cut a few pieces off, like I said there, and uh, get them installed. We'll do the same. Just going to make me a few 
Put me a few pieces out here so that I can just grab and put them on. Kind of using this as a scale to so I can get them all cut the same size or close to it. I'll set that up there. All right. Wrap it around the top because the top is also where the threads are gone. Do the same thing except I'm going to overlap a little bit more. We're overlapping over the top on this one. Then I'll do I'll do one more that'll overlap more on the bottom one. This is some gooey stuff. Reminds me of kind of a fly paper. I'm gonna put one along here because that's uh, starting to peel off. Make that fairly long because I'm gonna wrap it around. Same thing, wrap it around the top. No, oh, we'll put those up there. I'll never see them. Wrap it around. Underneath. There we go. For now, that is all I'm worried about. No, it's not the best in the world. Yeah, it's kind of a hodgepodge fix, but uh, at the moment, it's the end of the year now anyway. Plus, so I don't want to spend the money on an awning. And uh, really it was just kind of separating a little bit so it's not like uh it's not like it was affecting the can you know the drivability of the rv or or making it leak inside the house or anything of that sort it's just the awning and anybody who's been camping and anyone who owns an rv knows these awnings are uh quite dangerous when it comes to wind storms and things of that sort they tear often part of the game uh, wind gets them they flap that's what causes little tears sun's on beating on them that's what dries out the uh, stitching and the and the uh threads on them so uh yep that's about all i'm looking at doing just a little bit of patch like that nothing nothing fancy that's your bonus for today we'll see you on the next one